Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 9, the most confidential knowledge, text number 15. Bhagavad Gita is the Kao Kripati, the rest of the world, I imagine that it's in the text of the Sanskrit. Jnana Yajnana Chapyanye Jnana Yajnana Chapyanye Yajanto Mam Upasate Yajanto Mam Upasate Ekotvena Pritaktvena Ekotvena Pritaktvena Bahuda Vishvato Mukam Bahuda Vishvato Mukam Mukam Kuruti Bhachala Mangamunai Degarin Nekrigar Naman Nesri Guru Minatona In the last few days we have been discussing this series of verses in the ninth chapter of Gita. Where Lord Krishna is uh, speaking of Buddhas, Mahatmas and others. So, uh, now we've come to the others. This is the verse about them. But just to review quickly, the mudhas were described as those who deride Krishna. Uh, these people, we call them materialists. Hmm. So they're convinced that matter is ultimate. There's nothing beyond matter. So therefore, when Krishna descends into this world and reveals his form and his activities, they deride him by saying, he is just another materially embodied person like you and me. Uh, even if they can be persuaded, just like at the time Krishna descended, when he was on this earth, they were such mudhas. And so they could witness uh, Krishna's uh, supreme power. So even if they can be persuaded to admit that Krishna is most powerful, they will still try to find some material explanation for that. Mm. Just like there was one Pandraka at the time of Krishna's appearance. So he thought that the uh, uh, position of Bhagavan, uh, Supreme Lord, is a post. Mm-hmm. And that he thought he was more qualified to hold that post than Krishna. So he, he was apparently thinking that by some development of you know, mystical power, uh, development of some opulence, that uh, one could rise up, up, up and finally uh, become um, Purushottama, the Supreme Person. He, he thought that he was a better Purushottam than Krishna. <laughs> so he dressed himself up like Krishna. Exactly the same dress, even he uh, apparently had put on his back some extra two arms <laughs> made of I don't know what <laughs> <laughs> so that he would have four arms. He thought all of this was perfectly in order. And what's more, he sent a letter uh, from his kingdom to Dwarka 
where Krishna was ruling. Uh, in this letter, he announced himself that I am Vasudev, I am the Supreme Lord, and you are a rascal. You have falsely assumed this position, which is really mine. Hmm. So, uh, he demanded that Krishna surrender to him or he would come and defeat Krishna in battle. When Pandraka's letter was read at Dwarka, there was much laughter for a long time. <laughs> and Krishna sent a letter black, uh, back to Pandraka. Uh, saying, because Pandraka had put in this letter so many, uh, you say, insults. <laughs> including uh, saying that Krishna, the name Krishna, uh, it can be given different meanings, or different meanings are there, and one of the meanings is black. So, uh, Pandraka in his letter, he took uh, the name, you are Krishna, and that means you are a black snake. Lord Krishna replied, yes, I am a black snake. And you are a sinful frog. <laughs> so I am going to come and swallow you. <laughs> and so, indeed, they did meet in battle and Pandraka was <laughs> annihilated totally. <laughs> Uh, so this is an, a very good example of a mudha. Uh, and just imagine, he was living right on the earth at the same time as Krishna. He knew Krishna. <laughs> he knew who Krishna was. He knew what Krishna had done in his appearance. And still he was thinking that Krishna is no better. Actually, he thought, I am better than Krishna. <laughs> So we should not be surprised that now, 5,000 years later, there's so many little mudhas uh, who will say, uh, who is this Krishna? He's just some mythological figure. And some also say very similar. They say this this name Krishna means black. So he was some black aborigine from the jungle who was very powerful. And uh, somehow he conquered the people and became their king. And they worshipped him as a god. <laughs> Uh, so these people, Krishna says here to Arjuna, that they are deluded. And they becoming uh, become attracted uh, in their delusion to demoniac and atheistic views. And whatever they may try to do or understand is all vanquished, it's all defeated. Mm-hmm. And then after explaining the mudhas, then he speaks of the mahatmas, the pure devotees, so this is a very famous couplet of verses, texts 13 and 14. 
стихите, това, това е една много известна поредица от два стиха, текст 13 и 14. Yes, all, in the last two days we spoke about these two verses extensively. И през последните два дни ние говорихме дълго и широко върху тези два стиха. But these are the pure devotees, always engaged in kirtan. No, uh, serving the Lord with great determination. Humbly bowing down, uh, down uh, humbly bowing down before Him. And always uh, worshiping Him uh, uh, with undeviated attention. И винаги го обожават с неотклонна решителност. Внимание. И те са под покровителството на личната божествена енергия на Кришна Дайви Пракрити. So now today we're learning about the others who are neither, they're neither foolish, like the Mudhas, but also They're not devotees. И днес от днешния текст ние научаваме за другите, които не са глупаци, но в същото време не са и предано отдадени. So these are philosophical speculators. Това са философските спекулатори. They are trying to understand Krishna in their own way. Те се опитват да разберат Кришна по свой собствен начин. So that means they are very much attached to their own perceptions their own understanding. Това означава, че са прекалено силно привържени към собствените си възприятия и собственото си разбиране. They do not have enough faith simply to accept the explanation that Krishna himself gives in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, this explanation uh, or direct revelation is handed down Guru Prampara and is received by those who are submissive uh, disciples. Те нямат достатъчно вяра, за да могат да приемат обяснението, което самият Кришна дава за себе си в Бхагава Гита и което пристига до нас по Гуру Парампара и може да бъде възприето от тези, които са покорни ученици. So these gyanis, these speculators, uh, they have three ways of trying to understand the Supreme Lord. Тези гиани или спекулатори, те имат три начина, опитвайки се да разберат Върховния Бог. And these three ways are arranged uh, in a order of, you can say, uh, best or uh, most learned uh, down to uh, least. И тези три... Uh, тези три начина са степенувани, като се започне от uh, най-учените и се стига на долу. So, the most learned among them uh, accept uh, the Vedas. Най-учените сред тях приемат Ведите. Mm-hmm. Uh, and learn from the Vedas that there is a universal form. И научават от Ведите, че има вселенска форма. Uh, now, what is this universal form? Well, the universe has emanated, well, this universe and millions, countless others, have emanated from Mahavishnu. And he has entered in to each one of these glowing golden balls which are leaving his pores. He simultaneously uh, expands into them As Vishnu. И във всяка една от тези uh, въртящи се uh, златни топки, които представляват тези вселени, които излизат от uh, неговите пори, Махавишна едновременно се разширява и влиза във всяка една от тях. And he lies down uh, within each of these golden shells. И той лежи във всяка една от тези златни черупки. Uh, and from his body there comes Just like from our body comes sweat, but he's God, so from his body comes a whole ocean, which fills up half of the universe. This is called the Garbodak Ocean. И тогава Богът, точно както от нашето тяло, излиза пот, 
Но тъй като това е болест, от него като тяло излиза цял океан. И от този океан той използва половината от тези селени, които се от този океан се нарича Гарбодака океан. And he lies on the surface of the Garbodak Ocean, being supported by Ananta Shesha, uh, who is his own expansion in the form of a tremendous serpent with countless heads. И той лежи на повърхността на този Гарбодак океан и там е поддържан от Ананта Шеша, който има формата на змия и също е негова експанзия. So Lying there, the Lord is breathing. Uh, he's sleeping and he's breathing. So when we sleep at night and we breathe, we make a sound <laughs> like that. <laughs> But when the Lord sleeps and breathes, he makes the vedic sound но когато богът спи и диша той създава звукът на ведите so his breath fills the whole uh, inner shell of the universe that is called prana the breath of life и неговият дъх изпълва вътрешната цялата вътрешност на вселената и това се нарича прана или силата на живота and this breath is vibrating with a divine sound called shabda жизнен дъх и той е изпълнен с божествен звук, който се нарича Шабда. And this sound is uh, amazingly potent. И този звук е uh, удивително могъщ. It is uh, permeated with knowledge. Той е изпълнен със знание. So, within this vibrating prana, so the life force, life air, of the whole universe which is vibrating with vedic sounds emanating from the lord so within that vibrating prana uh, there is the form of the whole universe in potential и в тази вибрираща прана която вибрира от която вибрация идва от самия бог има форма на вселената която е в потенциален вид just like this house that we're in So uh, there was originally a design, uh, like I think a blueprint. They you know, this is usually called a blueprint. It's this architectural design. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so the shabda uh, sound vib- vibration emanating in the shell of the, the inner shell of the universe is uh, the plan of the whole universe и тази шабда която изпълва цялата вселена която вибрира цялата вселена тя е първоначалният план на вселената so then from the lord's navel grows a lotus и след това от пъпът на бога израства лотос the lotus opens and there is brahma sitting in the middle of the lotus with four heads и там седи Брама с четири глави. So he is Svayambhu. That means self-born, not born from a mother, but born from the Supreme Self, the Lord Himself. И той се нарича Svayambhu, което означава, че не е роден от майка, а е себе роден, роден от върховното себе или Бог. Uh-huh. So yeah, this is a very ancient understanding. Uh, going back to the beginning of the world. <laughs> uh, that the Son of God, his birth is pure. Brahma is the Son of God. Yeah. Christians have taken this idea. <laughs> But it is it is much, much, much older than Christianity. Yeah, so anyway, Brahma, because he is the most qualified uh, living entity in the whole universe, therefore he alone is able to directly uh, hear and understand this Vedic sound. Ето защо той е способен непосредствено да слуша и да възприема този звук. And when he realizes this Vedic sound, of course, 
he has to meditate on it uh, for a period of four billion three hundred million of our years. И след това той трябва да медитира върху него в продължение на 4 милиона и 4 милиарда и 300 милиона години. So he realizes the uh, meaning of this sound in his heart. И той реализира значението на този звук в сърцето си. So he sees the form of the Supreme Lord. И той вижда формата на Върховния Бог. And simultaneously he sees the form of the entire universe as the energies of the Lord, His mystic potencies. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, emanating from around the form of Garbhadakrasha Vishnu are the Astasiddhis. Uh, like Anima, Anima means Uh, the power to be smaller than the smallest. So you see, there's Gorbhadakrasha Vishnu, uh, such huge form filling half of the universe. Uh, but uh, at the same time, by his potency, he's anima, he's smaller than the smallest. He enters into every atom. Но в същото време със своята сила анима, той влиза толкова е миниатюрен, че влиза във всяка един, всеки един атом. And simultaneously, he is Mahima, greater than the greatest. И в същото време той е Mahima, по-голямо от най-голямото. And uh, also heavier than the heaviest, it means. И също така това означава най- по-тежък от най-тежкото. Simultaneously, Lagima, lighter than the lightest. И в същото време по-лек от най-лекото. Uh, and uh, Prapti, uh, although he's in one place, he can acquire anything from any other place, no matter what the distance. And Kama Vayasita means that he fulfills his desires uh, totally contradicting the laws of nature. Laws of nature mean nothing to him. <laughs> Whatever he wants uh, just manifests by his own desire. So these and others, other potencies, anyway, they add up to eight, austicity, eight perfections. And these are the perfections of the Lord by which the whole universe comes into being. И uh, така нататък всички, всички те са 8 такива мистични енергии, които с помощта на които uh, цялата Вселена се проявява съществува. So Brahma sees directly by hearing the Vedic sound his heart becomes purified. So he sees within his heart the transcendental form of the Lord and these mystic potencies uh, by which the universe is created maintained and destroyed. So when Brahma has this realization, then he is given a service by the Lord. The Lord speaks to him. И след като Брама има тази получи от тази реализация, той Богът говори в директно с него. And tells him, by this knowledge that you have realized in the Vedic sound, now you create. И той му дава служене. Той му казва, с това знание, което ти получи от ведическия звук, сега създай Вселената. And Brahma's work of creation is simply that he draws out from within the stem of that same lotus He has appeared first, but within that stem, there are countless other jivas, souls. They're still sleeping. So he, waken, he wakes them up. <laughs> Get up. <laughs> And he places them within the ocean of the Lord's uh, creative potency, which is manifest before him as these mystic powers. He gives them bodies uh, within, according to their karma, uh, according to their level of development, He places them within this 
uh, energetic display. И както самият той е бил произведен от стъблото на лотоса, по същия начин цялото това стъбло на лотоса той е изпълнено с много други живи и драма всъщност ги изважда оттам, той ги събужда и поставя всеки един, всеки, всяко едно от тях, в зависимост от неговата карма и степен на развитие, ги поставя в цялото това, в този океан от енергиите на Бога. So that's how we got here. <laughs> and we are conditioned by our desires to enjoy this world. So we are conditioned by the energy of the Lord. You see? So therefore, uh, our vision of this universe is very distorted. Ето защо нашият поглед върху разбирането ни за тази Вселена е много изкривено. It's something like this. Uh, you have in Bulgaria a very famous beverage called rakia. В България, например, вие имате едно много известно питие, което се нарича rakia. So, this uh, rakia, uh, someone in knowledge can explain what this is to you и тази ракия някой който има знание може да ви обясни какво представлява тя everything about the chemical con- com- uh, constitution how it is made etc 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 например всичко за химичните съставки как тя е била направена и така нататък и така нататък but if you want still after hearing all this very clear explanation you still have a very strong desire but i must enjoy this rakia но въпреки всичко цялото това обяснение, ако вие имате много силно желание, аз искам да се наслаждавам на тази ракия. And then you start to drink it one glass after the other. И след това почвате да пиете чаша след чаша. Then your consciousness will become very distorted. Тогава съзнанието ви много ще се изкриви. You see? Uh, and you will no longer have Uh, any clear knowledge of what this rakia is. Why? Because you are under the influence of it now. Mm-hmm. So, you see, only Brahma, because he is so qualified, only he has this, you can say, objective, detached uh, perception of the universe as it is. Единствено Брама, тъй като той е най-квалифицирания, той може да той притежава това, което може да наречете обективно и непривързано виждане в нещата. Well, we can say Brahma and Narada and four Kumaras. Е, можем да кажем и Брама, Нарада, четиримата Кумари. Very, very great, great sages. These are Narada, four Kumaras are direct sons of Brahma. So they are also seeing the universe as it is, as the uh, uh, creative energy of Krishna, in which the, uni- uh, the living entities have been situated by their karma. But most living entities are trying to enjoy this world and thus their consciousness becomes is no longer objective it, they become uh, drunk they become <laughs> deluded но тъй като повечето живи същества те желаят да се наслаждават на тази материя на този свят то те стават объркани те повече не могат да възприемат правилното което се е so you know when we go out at night now you, you can go out and if the sky is clear you can see the stars you can also set up a telescope and look But whatever you're seeing, it's like the, you know, the seeing of a drunken man. You're not actually seeing the universe as it is. We're seeing it through our own intoxication of Maya. Това, което ще видите, няма да е Вселената такава каквато е, а такава каквато ние виждаме в своето опиянено състояние. So, there are, uh, yes, 
brahmanas, learned personalities, who follow in the footsteps of the original brahmana, that's brahma. Brahmanite, which are intelligent, the ones who follow the original brahmana, which is brahma. And uh, they try to understand this universe by way of the Vedic sound. Mm-hmm. As a form of the Lord. This is this particular form of the Lord is called Mahapurush, the great person. And he is worshipped by sacrifice. There is this Vedic mantra, the Purusha Shukta, which is, addresses uh, this universal form. Shahasha Shirsha, uh, meaning he, thousands of heads. Shahashraksha, thousands of eyes. Mm-hmm. And you will, uh, in 11th chapter, Krishna will show this very form to Arjuna. So, uh, this is a bona fide understanding. But it is not complete. It is still material. Uh-huh. Because uh, this universe is certainly not the ultimate form of God. Mm-hmm. But it is the form that is understood uh, by hearing the uh, ritualistic Vedic sound vibration. And following all the <coughs> rules and regulations of the Sattva Guna, the mode of goodness. Mm-hmm. And practicing this yeah. Jnana Yoga, Jnana Yagya, sacrifice through knowledge. Mm. So this is most advanced um, among these Gyanis. Then the uh, middle position is this Pritaktvena um, Bahuda uh, understanding the Lord in diversity. This is seeing, all right, everything is God's energy. Uh, But one has lost, you see, because this is lower than the ones who realize the universal form. So they have lost the sense that there is an origin to everything. Uh, uh, there is just this energy everywhere, energy, divine energy. Mm. Uh, so, uh, everything then is divine. Mm-hmm. So we can worship anything. <laughs> now, generally, as Prabhupada says in the purport, that means they worship the demigods. Yeah. Rather than worshipping, you see, the, the whole universe in the form of the Mahapurush, they start to worship the different parts and parcels of the Mahapurush, which are the demigods. Right, we said uh, the eyes of the Mahapurush. So, the, uh, as Krishna says, one of his eyes is the sun, another eye is the moon. So, sun is Surya. Moon is Chandra. Mm-hmm. Or the arms, mention the arms. So, Indra, this is the uh, among the demigods, he's the Chetri of the arms, the king. 
Или пък ръцете са споменати. Индра. И сред полубоговете той е кшатрия, този, който е царя. Or the mouth. Agni. The Lord's mouth is filled with fire. You see on the... You see right here? <laughs> you see the fire. So this is the universal form. So Agni Dev, the god of fire, is within the mouth. И Агни Дев, полубогът на устата, той се намира в... Той е устата на Маховната Божествена личност, както можеш да видите там на тази картина. Тя е огънят излиза от устата. So by imagination, they, they think that we can worship Agni as God, as the Supreme. И посредством въображението си, те мислят, ние можем да обожаваме Агни като върховният, като върховният. And this is in accordance with the... Uh, the because this is ritualistic system. <coughs> so uh, there is throughout uh, the year, throughout time, there are rituals as the seasons change that the Brahmanas have to perform. So according to time, place, circumstance, they may worship uh, uh, Агни е Supreme. И зависимо от времето, мястото и обстоятелството, да те могат да обожават Агни като върховния. And then without any sense of contradiction, they can worship Indra as Supreme. И след това без никакво чувство за противоречие, обожават Индра като върховния. Or Surya, or Chandra, or Varuna. Или Surya, или Chandra, или Varuna. Any of the Vedic demigods. Всеки един от ведическите полугове. Mm-hmm. Because the Lord has, it's this idea, Prabhupada gives this example, take a piece of paper and then tear it up into many pieces. And spread them around. So the original is lost. You see? So you can take this piece or that piece but the original is now lost. So they take the there's a Vedic mantra, Bahu Sham, he became many. That's how they understand it. Yes, originally there was one, one Purusha, but he divided. And now there are many Purushas, many gods. So we can worship any of them. И Баху Шам, това е тяхното разбиране. Първоначално, да, той беше една личност, един върховен, но след това той се раздели и сега те станаха много върховни. So this is uh, one step down. И това е една стъпка по-надолу. And then at the bottom, there are those who look at the universal form. You see all these heads, faces spreading out across the sky, arms, uh, eyes, all of this, and they look and see, yes, and one of these faces is me. There are all these living entities have been manifest. So if you take the logic of the demigod worshippers, we can worship Agni as God. So the, this Ekatvena uh, uh, people uh, who think I am God, then they say, well, why not me? You see? There's, okay, there's Indra, there's Agni, there's this, that. But I am also here. I'm also part of the universal form. <laughs> Те обожават Индра като върховния и някой друг полубог, но те, тези, които са на третото ниво, те мислят, а защо не и аз? Аз също съм тук, аз също съм част от материалната, от тези вселена. So, as Prophet says here, uh, this type of, it's called technically Aham Graho Upasana, to worship the self as divine. So, the, at least there is this conception that my identity is not material. Everything is ultimately one Brahman, one spirit. Now it is differently manifest. And I am one of these manifestations. So I can achieve the total through myself. 
If I understand myself, to be transcendental. So this is uh, this is actually the philosophy of Sankaracharya. The famous Mayavadi. That uh, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya means actually this universe with all of its variety, it is Mitya, it is not real, it is an illusion, a kind of a dream. So you should take that away and then there will only be the truth, Brahma Satyam, uh, which is the one uh, soul. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya но всъщност цялата тази вселена, цялото това прозрение, което ние виждаме пред себе си, те са като един сън или някакво видение. И когато ние го отдръпнем, тогава ние ще можем да видим Брама Сатям, душата. Така че всички ние сме Бога. И всички ние сме едно. Disciple of a Mayavadi guru who was hearing this philosophy for a long time. And finally he thought he understood. <laughs> oh, I am God. <laughs> Then what do I need a guru for? <laughs> so then he got up and said, Thank you, Guruji. I've understood. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> I'm God, so I'm going. <laughs> so he was walking through the street, through the marketplace. And he had a big smile on his face. He's reflecting, oh... I am God. <laughs> I finally understood it. It's wonderful. I can do what I like. I am liberated. Nobody can tell me anything. <laughs> so then there was a commotion. It was a crowded marketplace, and there was some commotion up ahead, some disturbance in the, uh, in the crowd of people. Uh, people were running one side the other. And there was a shout from ahead. Mad elephant! <laughs> Get out of the way! Uh, in South India, even now, where they have elephants. Sometimes this happens. You know, it's like, here you have dogs. <laughs> And sometimes a dog becomes mad. And begins to chase people. Uh, so, but when it's an elephant, <laughs> <laughs> that is something. <laughs> once, once in a while in South India, this happens. <laughs> so there you see all the people fleeing in all directions. <laughs> And, but this... Mayavadi, he's, I am God. <laughs> so he kept walking straight on. People were running the other way. Saduji, Saduji, help, mad elephant! <laughs> <laughs> And so then the elephant appeared. <laughs> so on the back of the elephant, there was one, it's called Mahout, the elephant rider. He's trying to control the elephant. <laughs> And he sees the sadhu coming. <laughs> And he's shouting, get out of the way! <laughs> <laughs> and so then the elephant came and with his 
big trunk, just swept this man right, you know, when the elephant does this, then you go flying, many meters. <laughs> so he was flying through the air for 20 meters and then crashed down on some marketplace stand with vegetables. <laughs> Той го пляснал и когато слънът удари някого по този начин, той просто извита и този човек излетява, прелетява 20 метра и се пляснал на една седия с дебелчики на пътя. So he was laying covered with broken vegetables and finally he could get up and he was, his body was damaged. He was walking very, with great difficulty. And so he went back to his guru. <laughs> so you can see, imagine him. His cloth was torn and covered with various kinds of vegetable juice. <laughs> and he was also bloody. And he was hobbling along, limping. And he came before his guru and said, I have one question. <laughs> you have been teaching that we are all God. <laughs> and actually, earlier today, I really thought I understood this. But something happened. Now I have a doubt. <laughs> I met a mad elephant in the marketplace. Uh, and I thought, this is illusion, I'm God. Uh, so I should, you know, stay very true to my realization. And not get out of the way. And now look what happened. So how can I understand this philosophy? And so the Guru said, My dear disciple, why didn't you... Yes, you are God, that's true. But why didn't you listen to God on the back of the elephant? Telling you to get out of the way. <laughs> so this is the problem. We can all say, I'm God. That's very easy. <laughs> but then we have a big problem of working out all these divine relationships. <laughs> so this philosophy is <laughs> not very realistic. <laughs> so, anyway, the Lord is explaining these two kinds of other not his devotees, who are trying to understand the Absolute in their own way. Hmm. Is there any question? Yes? We are in the neophyte state, so it's not recommended <coughs> uh, to feel too much, to uh, much in this field of feeling and thinking and this and that. And uh, because our mind and senses are not purified, uh, but some uh, simultaneously we try to uh, wake up our spiritual identity to uh, uh, to develop and manifest our spiritual identity. So sometimes there is such a duality, so we mis mistake 
our uh, spiritual identity with this uh, coverings of the soul. So we try to be personal. So how to deal with this duality on the mere fact that Well, covering of the soul means a hankara for false people. So the analysis of this word, it has two parts, aham, which means I, and kara, which uh, means the doer. So the false uh, conception of the self is thinking, I am the doer. And then because I am the doer, then I am also the deserver of what I have done. Well, that in a way is true. You see, if you think you are the doer, yes, then you will get what you have done. Yeah, or what you actually what you think you have done. Yeah. But Krishna says, "Ahamkara vimudhatma." Someone who thinks that way is a fool. Because prakriti kriyamanan. Who, what is the doer here is actually the material nature. The body that we have. Body means the gross physical body, but also the subtle body, the mind. Uh, mm-hmm. This is material machinery. Uh, and it is uh, working uh, due to the constant rotation or you know just like in an automobile there's some something inside turning so similarly everything in this material world there are three modes always turning goodness passion ignorance that makes everything work so, if I think I'm the doer, then I'm foolish. It's like thinking I am my car. There are many people who think that. <laughs> they spend so much money to get a car. <coughs> They've selected this car. So, you know, it's an image of themselves. When they drive, they, you know, look at <laughs> Everyone will see how important I am. <laughs> and if, if someone in the traffic hits them, they shout, You hit me, you <laughs> rascal! <laughs> but he's not the car. <laughs> so this is a hum, a hum car. <laughs> he's thinking I am the car. <laughs> I am the doer. <laughs> So then, yes, Krishna actually says to Arjuna in the 18th chapter, if you think you are the doer, then you will be forced to accept the results of this action. Now the foolish person thinks, 
Well, yeah, that's great. And now go for a little meeting. I will work in this world, and I will earn a uh, result of my work, and I will enjoy it. This is very good business. Let me do it. But the problem is, is that because this is material nature, then this machinery, this body, what is it doing? It's being born, it is growing old, it is getting diseased, and it is falling apart, dying. So if you want to accept the result, you have to accept this too. <laughs> Но тогава, тъй като а, това е една, а, тялото е една машина, а, която, която какво прави? Тя се ражда, след това израства, разболява се и най-накрая се разпада и умира. То, а, ако ви искате да приемете едната страна на сражението, вие трябва да приемете и това. And this is called conditioning. И това се нарича обословено. So one becomes conditioned by this idea that I am the doer, one then is thinking I am the body. Ако някой обословен от идеята аз съм вършителят, на всеки един ден той си мисли аз съм тялото. And then one must suffer. И тогава човек трябва да става. And there's no avoiding it then. Тогава това не може да бъде избегнато. Mm-hmm. So that's why Krishna says, Vimuda, this is very stupid. Защо Кришна казва, това е Vimuda, това е много глупаво, защо? Why should we be so foolish? Защо трябва да сме толкова глупаво? So this is the answer to your question. When you ask this question, it sounds very, you know, <laughs> delicate, <laughs> difficult, complicated, but it's a very simple thing. The spiritual position is that I am not the doer. Okay, so, for a devotee, Krishna is the doer, because Our activities, if you're in devotional service, are, then the activities here are spiritual. It's the same point. Mahatmana Sumam Parde Daivim Prakriti Mashrita. So the devotees are under the divine energy. So the divine energy is doing it. You go out and you sell 100 books. Uh, who did that? Daivi Prakriti did that. This was the divine energy. Okay, so... You come back and everyone goes, Chai! Madra ki jai! Boom, boom, boom! So, but actually, what is this? Why do we do this? Uh, because we celebrate that someone among us has become empowered by the divine energy to do nice service. Но защо ние правим това? А, защото ние празнуваме това, че някой сред нас е бил вдъхновен и упълномощен от върховната енергия. But if as the drums are beating, we're going... Но ако това се случва, докато бият за рамените... Then we are becoming very foolish. Тогава ставаме много глупо. So one has to have this discrimination. <laughs> to see who, who is the real doer. <laughs> It is Krishna. Krishna's divine energy. <laughs> And the whole point, when we say surrender to Krishna, this is what it means. <laughs> surrender to Krishna does not mean that you just become stunned. <laughs> Or like when the police come, you know, surrender. <laughs> But there is this dynamic Daivi Prakriti. We explain how. Uh, Krishna is laying, as Gaurav Daksha Vishnu, he's sleeping. 
but even just by sleeping and breathing, there's so much potency coming out. The whole, uh, you know, potential universe is being manifest. Everything. And Brahma sees it in reality. Но в същото време, въпреки че той спи, толкова много а, неща се проявява, толкова а, цялата тази, тази насин план на Вселената, той се проявява и Брама може да го види непосредствено. So, Освободен на Кришна означава ние да а, влезем под а, на, 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 да бъдем направлявани от Неговата Божествена енергия. So it is in this way that Vaishnavas do wonderful things. And because they are Vaishnavas, they give all credit to Krishna. And the fools, they take the credit for themselves. I did this, I did that, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> ah, so, and then... Maya says, oh, so you want to take the credit, do you? <laughs> well, what about birth? What about death? <laughs> take that too. <laughs> you, you think you're doing everything? All right, then do this too. Be born, be die. Uh, Мислите, че правите всичко, тогава направете и това. Раждайте се, умирайте, бъдете мъртви. So, you see, by coming under divine potency, devotee is also detached from the workings of this body. Така че, намирайки се под покровителството на божествената енергия, предано отдадене също така е непривързан към това тяло. Our interest is to serve Krishna. That's all we want. This is Lord Chaitanya's prayer. So we are following uh, his uh, divine example. Not done on that Janam. He's always saying, I, I don't want any result from my service. Uh, uh, even I, I'm not asking for liberation. Uh, just give me a place in your causeless devotional service. Uh, so, uh, if, you know, we take it that Krishna has put us here to serve him, that's it. And wherever we go next after this life, that is just another opportunity to serve the Lord. And when you get really, really good at serving the Lord, really expert in pleasing Him, then He brings you to Goloka Vrindavan. <laughs> because that's the, you know, the, the real high-level uh, ecstatic service. For the most expert devotees of all. But anyway, we're at the practice stage. Practice makes perfect. We're practicing in this body to serve Krishna. If one is surrendered to Krishna, there's no problem. We might take birth again. But devotional service is devotional service. It is transcendental. You see, one who knows this uh, now you can that can be taken away. Yeah. Here is the body. I am not the body. But I've been given this body to serve Krishna. All right. So let me do it. Use this body for Krishna 
And then when the body is finished, all right, Krishna, what's next? <laughs> He's probably the Tatya was a Krishna, he should look around whoever got his push and look around, okay, Krishna, you got four sevens. We'll leave it up to him. <laughs> and uh, as soon as one has this uh, consciousness, that person is liberated. There's two kinds of liberated souls. There's the Videha Muktas. They don't have a body, a physical body. They're in the spiritual world, in Krishna's pastimes. But they're also the Jivan Muktas. They're in this world, but they're Muktas, they're liberated. Hmm. And uh, <coughs> Jivan Muktas, uh, the uh, most advanced of those, they're also in the spiritual world at the same time. Hmm. They're siddhas, they're perfect. They're simultaneously serving Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan and selling books <laughs> in Sofia. Okay. Feel the pro party.